The chair recognizes the gentleman from Florida, Mr. Posey, for five minutes. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. When I saw that thing explode, I was happy it wasn't at KSC. <laughs> uh, Mr. Administrator, I, uh, I really, really am happy with the way you are leading NASA. And uh, to the best of your knowledge, uh, we'd like to know how you feel NASA's budget uh, for space activities compares with China's, particularly when it comes to lunar operations. Uh, thank you, Congressman Posey. Uh, and you and I feel pretty strongly about this the same way. Um, China has overall dollars in their space program, and their space program is basically a military space program as well, but the human part. Uh, they're less dollars compared to ours, but the Chinese government's budget has super opportunity of growing because they are a much, uh, their GNP has so much opportunity for growth and therefore their space budget to increase within their overall uh, government budget. Uh, they have had extraordinary successes in the last decade. Uh, and, by the way, uh, a number of their spacecraft uh, interestingly look a lot like what you see in the free world spacecraft. So uh, I think we have to be mindful of that. Well, you know, it, it's an undeniable fact that uh, through economic <coughs> dominance, uh, which they're clearly leading right now, uh, they hope to achieve military superiority and we, and we can't let that happen. Their first mission to the moon won't be about studying rocks, you know, and the heritage of the earth. And, and uh, uh, they militarize everything that they do. Everything that they do, they are a real threat. And, and I, th I thank you for that good analysis. May I show you a picture, Congressman? You, you may. Show me all the pictures you want, Mr. This Mr. is a, a picture of the crater pocked south pole of the moon. This is where we're going and this is where China's going. Why? Because if this is the moon and the sun is coming in at an angle, there are constantly shadowed parts, as you can see in that picture. In those constant dark parts of the moon, we know is water ice. So we are sending a probe later this year to dig to see if there's water underneath the surface. If there is, you got hydrogen and oxygen. And that's why we want to go to the South Pole. Now that picture also tells you with so many craters, it's a dangerous place to land. We got to be right on the money. And there's precious few parts where you can land. And my concern is, as I have stated publicly many times, if China were to get there first, they say, this is our territory, you stay out. And of course, we go as an international mission, and that is for scientific research purposes, peaceful purposes. Uh, you, you mentioned the DART mission. Do, do we know yet if it was able to deflect the orbit of the asteroid? They said it would take a while before we'd find out, and I've been watching the news for it. So. Yeah, you're talking about the uh, DART mission where we hit the asteroid? Yeah. Oh, yes, sir. We knew that fairly quickly afterwards with telescopes that it saw, and the reason we knew so quickly, it was that 350-foot-wide asteroid that revolved around an asteroid that was about a half mile wide. So we could determine that it moved in its orbit around the bigger asteroid by going closer to the asteroid. And that impact at 16,000 miles an hour by that spacecraft that is probably from here to the end of the table wide 
uh, it did its job. Very good. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. My time's expired.